Hi, I'm Tiffany, a volunteer with the Fungal Diversity Survey's West Coast Rare Fungi Challenge. I currently live in the Eastern Cascades of Washington State, having, uh, having recently moved here from California. So I made this presentation to highlight a few of the rare fungi species that can be found up in the California mountains. The West Coast Rare Fungi Challenge is a project that was started in 2020 to document rare, underdocumented, or potentially threatened mushroom species in Western North America. The West Coast Challenge currently has 20 species, which were selected by a team of mycologists for their diversity, ease of identification, and general beauty or charisma. As you can see, we have a wide variety of some super interesting mushrooms here. The main objectives of this project are to protect fungi and their habitats. We work towards this goal in three main ways. By collecting observations of these species, we generate data about where the fungi occur, when they fruit, and the habitats they prefer. We also collect high quality specimens and sequence their DNA, which can then be used by researchers to help understand their taxonomic and evolutionary history better, which in turn can lead to future protections. The Rare Challenge helps to increase awareness of the need for fungal conservation and is a fun way to get others involved in these efforts. When it comes to conservation, there's so much emphasis on plants and animals, so we just wanna elevate fungi to the same level as the flora and fauna. Mushrooms can go extinct too, but there's just not a lot of data on the subject yet. The West Coast Challenge has 20 species in total, and 16 of these species can be found in California. A majority of these are in Northern California, but many of them can be found in other parts of the state. Again, here are all 20 species. And highlighted here with the four stars are species that occur in the mountainous and alpine regions of the state. Since they are found at elevation, their fruiting season begins as the snow starts to melt, so essentially the spring and summer months. The four species I'll discuss are the rosy snowbank waxy cap, the red green truffle milky, the red sierra court, and the lobed oysterling. Hopefully, if you see these in the future, you'll be able to recognize them and know what steps to take. First up is the cutest of the mountain species, the little bubblegum pink rosy snowbank waxy cap, Hygrophorus getsii. You can find these cuties growing next to melting snowbanks in mountain hemlock forests. The entire fruiting body is a pinkish to salmon pink color, especially the gills. They can fade as they get older, but the gills remain that light pink color. The cap is about one to two inches across and is slightly slimy when wet. They are not uncommon yet, but we suggest or suspect that the snowy habitat for the species is shrinking rapidly, leaving them stranded on isolated mountaintops instead of inhabiting a wide connected area throughout the Western mountains. This next weirdo is the red green truffle milky, Lactarius rubriviridis. It's a Lactarius, a milk cap, but has a truffle-like underground growth form, unlike most Lactarius with a cap and stipe. The giveaway that it's a Lactarius is that it bleeds or oozes milk when cut. It grows underground in duff, but can sometimes be found poking out of the duff. It's about the size of a potato, but lumpier and bruises a greenish, bluish gray when handled. The milk is a dark red, and the inside is full of orangey, pinkish brown pits and holes with some white veins running through it. And that's the vestigial stem. It's been found near campgrounds in pine and true fir forest in California and Oregon. But whether it likes the disturbance found around the campgrounds or if that's just where us humans happen to be and are able to find these sneaky little guys remains unknown. The species has only been found a few times, so keep your eyes peeled for it in June. Next up is the fabulous red Sierra Cort Cortinarius Sierra Ensis. This stunning bright orange rusty red colored beauty can be found high up in the eastern Sierras in subalpine meadows near Lodgepole Pine Forest. It isn't always as brilliant red as in these photos and can be a more cinnamon, rufous, brownish color on the cap, especially as it ages. The gills are a bright red to a rusty red, while the stipe is similar in color to the cap and slightly darker at the base. Lodgepole pines in the Sierra Nevada are in decline due to drought and widespread bark beetle infestation. The Red Sierra Court relies on lodgepole pines for its sugars, so as lodgepole pine forests disappear, the threat to this mushroom increases exponentially. And last but not least, we have the diminutive lobed oysterling Arenia lobata. It's a moss parasite that grows in cold streams and bogs in the alpine. It likes wet areas so much that it has even been found underwater along mossy creek edges. 
Uh, this rubbery little Arrhenia has veins instead of true gills, can have one to many little lobes, is a darker shade of brown on its upper side, and looks very reminiscent of a little mouse ear. If you're up near wet mossy areas like meadows or along streams up in the mountains, keep an eye out for this little one. It's kind of hard to find, but if moss is around and it's very wet, you might be able to find one. The species has been proposed and assessed as near threatened for the IUCN red list of threatened species, but has not been published yet. Since it's known from high mountain springs and northern latitudes, it may be in danger as global temperatures rise. If you happen to find any of these species or just want to get in the habit of properly documenting and collecting fungi, this is a great visual diagram of the necessary steps. Take photos of every side of the mushroom, including shots of the top, underside and stipe of the mushroom, as well as a shot of the habitat and substrate. Collect the specimen and keep it somewhere safe like a basket or tackle box on your travels back to your home. Dehydrate the specimen. I just use a food dehydrator, but a bright sunny window with good airflow or even an oven on very low, like less than 150 Fahrenheit can also work. Once the fungi is completely dry, it should snap if you bend it. You can snort or store it in a labeled paper pouch or plastic bag to send to get sequenced. You can and should definitely upload your photos to iNaturalist or Mushroom Observer. The end of the URL of your observation is a unique number that you can write on your stored specimen bag. Also be sure to stay informed of the collection rules or permit requirements of the specific land you're visiting especially national parks or state parks, since you might need a permit when you're visiting those spots. For much more detailed instruction on how to properly collect and document your fungal finds, scan this QR code, which will take you to the Fundus website. And to find detailed info on all 20 West Coast rare fungi species, including individual downloadable information pamphlets, scan this QR code, which will take you to the West Coast Rare Challenge page on the Fundus website. And finally, join the Fundus Biodiversity Database project on iNaturalist. This project is collecting observations of all fungi in North America to better understand the diversity, ranges, and associations of all species to aid in the conservation and protection of macrofungi in North America. I just want to thank you for taking the time to learn about the West Coast Rare Challenge and to invite you to help us out if it sounds interesting. Fundus is just a group of passionate volunteers and we would love to work with you. You can email us at westcoast underscore rare at fundus.org if you'd like to get more involved. Thanks so much for learning and listening. Now let's get out there and find these fungi. Bye.